Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Streamline. Most people have studied about angles in high school, but today we will understand about an angle in 3D space known as solid angle. In a 2D plane, if you have a point P and you want to find the direction of the point P from another point A, you can draw a line from point A to point P, then draw a vertical line from point P to point B and then join B to A. Now you can find the angle between them. This is known as planar angle given by tan theta equal to PB by AB. So you can find theta by taking inverse of the tan. But if an object is in a 3D space and you need to find the direction of the object with respect to a point on the surface, then the angle you need is known as solid angle. Let's understand how to calculate the solid angle as it is important when doing thermal radiation calculations. Let's assume we have a hot surface emitting radiation in all the directions in a 3D space. This is known as diffuse emission. The radiation energy usually has different strengths in different directions, so it travels different amount of distance in each direction as shown here. Now if we enclose all the directions where radiation can travel emitted diffusely from a surface, we get a hemispherical space. The coordinate system used in solid angle derivation is called spherical coordinate system. Let's look at some important terms related to spherical coordinate system. Firstly, the direction vectors. Here we have a unit direction vector n cap which is normal to the surface and unit vectors t1 and t2 cap which are tangent to the surface. Now if we have a point P in 3D space, then the angle formed between the line joining the surface and the point and the unit normal vector n cap is known as polar or zenith angle shown by the symbol theta. If we project the point P perpendicular onto a reference plane, the angle between the projected vector and a tangent vector on the reference plane is called the azimuthal angle shown by the symbol phi. For deriving the solid angle, let's first discretize the hemispherical space into smaller elements of d theta and d phi. Let's assume that the radiation emitted by the hot surface reaches an infinitesimally small surface element dAj on this hemispherical space. So the solid angle with which an infinitesimal surface DAJ is seen from a point on the surface DA is defined as the projection of the surface DA onto a plane normal to the direction vector divided by the square of the distance R between DAJ and DA. Now let's find DAJ. Here we are considering the infinitesimally small surface DAJ which makes infinitesimally small azimuthal angle D5 and an infinitesimal small polar angle D theta. So, solid angle is given by projected area DAJ divided by the square of the distance R. Let's name the points on the surface DAJ. We can calculate DAJ as the product of the sides AB into BC. So, let's first find out BC. We know that if we have an arc of length L from a circle of radius R which subtends a very small angle theta, then L is equal to R theta. Using this concept, we get BC is equal to R D theta from the triangle OBC. Now let's take the triangle OBD. We can get BD equal to R sin theta. Further the triangle ABD 
we get a b is equal to r sin theta d phi so ultimately we get d a j is equal to r d theta into r sin theta d phi putting the value of d a j in the formula of solid angle we get d omega is equal to r square sin theta d theta d phi divided by the distance r square so we get d omega is equal to sin theta d theta d phi which is our solid angle so for surface emission we can calculate the solid angle here the theta ranges from 0 to pi by 2 and phi ranges from 0 to 2 pi putting this values of on the integral limits and the value of d omega that is sin theta d theta d phi we get the total solid angle of surface emission to be 2 pi for a volume emission theta ranges from 0 to pi and phi 0 to 2 pi so here we get the total solid angle as 4 pi i hope you like this explanation and like and subscribe and keep looking for more videos.